Rub up your engines! Today, I'm gonna talk about the quality, or lack thereof, in GM products. Now, as you can see, paint and trim wasn't something they really were that good at. You can see it's rusting off here. Here it's just flaking off. <laughs> all the way around and when we get to the back you can really see where the paint is flagging off of this thing <laughs> realize this baby was one of the early ones that used a water-based paint perhaps gm should have tested this water-based paint a little bit better applied it a little bit differently because this is all occurring because the water-based paint is just flagging off but check out this toyota it's about the same age as that chevy it was water-based paint. Still looks pretty good. I guess Toyota tested it out better first before they just started putting it on vehicles and having it flag off. Now, I'm not a big fan of water-based paint, but as you can see on a Toyota, it can be done correctly under the right circumstances with the right painting booth materials and the right type of paint applying it the correct way. But in this case, they really messed up big time somewhere. So in terms of aesthetics, I give the Chevy an F. Totally failed on the paint. Let's go under the hood. Now this baby has the old style V8 engine hidden way under here. Pretty much impossible to work at when you're accessing it from under the hood. So in this case you gotta open the door. If you really want to work on an engine, you gotta take this whole panel assembly out and the engine's under there. In terms of access and working ability, huh, I'd give another F on this one. When I was a young mechanic, working on a lot of these things, they're a pain to work on. I thought, well, at least in the future, they'll make them better. Well, in this case, eh. <laughs> they actually made them worse. Now these express vans started in 1996. Basic van, look at a 2021. It doesn't look that much different than this. A commercially designed van. As you can see, there's no windows on this side. And when we open it up, you can see that there is a lot of room inside these things. These things are spacious inside. Now they come with various engines, but unfortunately, a lot of them had a V6 engine, which is so underpowered for this thing. Pull the van around, but if you really load it up with stuff, it just didn't have enough horsepower to really get it up and going very well. Now you can see here, it says Vortec. It's supposedly in a combustion chamber it created a vortex so it burnt more efficiently had more power but it doesn't matter with a v6 engine these things are dramatically underpowered the gas hogs anyway you might as well as get a v8 engine if you're going to get something this big you put in a puny engine it's going to be strained all the time and it's still not going to get very good gas mileage now if you don't care about falling off paint in an old-fashioned body style this 05 has lasted a while as you can see this thing has 204,000 miles on it but unfortunately the radio's broke and you can't even turn it off anymore <laughs> and a long time ago the door handle broke off here check the other side same thing that one's gone too and strangely enough this radio is now stuck on some station with somebody speaking Chinese I don't know that's that kind of omen <laughs> I find that rather strange because last year GM sold a lot more vehicles in China than they did in the United States. They're very popular there for some reason. But those are GM vehicles that are actually built in China too. And here's a weird one. They got these giant dipsticks because the engine and transmission are way back there. And this one won't go back in. Something's broken inside this giant kinky thing. That's just poor build quality. Now my customer here wants me to do a total look over the vehicle. So I'm going to do a giant scan now. He wants to see is it worth putting a little money in and keeping it for a while or just getting rid of the thing now. So we'll just get inside. Go to the dash. Go on there and plug it in. <laughs> There it goes. And I don't know about you, but having this radio that you can't shut off would drive me nuts. I'd just tear the thing out and throw it away. <laughs> well, it's now scanning it, going through all the systems. We'll see what it says. See a whole bunch of faults already. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, nine. 14, 15, 18 volts. Heated oxygen sensor, mass air flow sensor, engine coolant temperature, torque converter, solenoid control circuit, and the transmission component is slipping. Basically, it tells me that the vehicle is actually in pretty horrendous shape. Customer is just using this as a weekend knock around. He throws the crap in it. So, only a fool would throw the money it would cost to fix the transmission, all those sensors, cause after all, it's got over 200,000 miles on it, and it still runs 
halfway decent. I mean, it was never a rocket to begin with, but it still goes down the road and it shifts good enough to get from point A to point B. Because those codes are just the tip of the iceberg. It also had problems with the ABS system, which is typical on these. I've replaced so many of the ABS main brake module assemblies. They were just made like garbage and they go bad all the time. And when I look at the ABS code, sure enough, it's got problems with the module, with the speed sensors. He doesn't care because he drives it conservatively just for knock around jobs. It's not like he's driving in a thing to California and back. I mean, really, seeing all the problems this vehicle has, while he controls in these things, isn't all that great. He can still drive the thing around. Let's say, you live out in the country where they don't do all that emissions inspections. I got a son who lives outside Nashville. They don't inspect cars at all there. So he could drive a thing like this knowing that eh, it'll get him where he's going most of the time. And he doesn't have to worry about making it pass the emissions and the state inspection systems. He could drive one of these things around. But if you live in an area where they have strict emissions testing and safety inspections, this thing wouldn't pass any of the tests without spending a small fortune in repairs to make it pass all those tests. Now I'll take it for a spin. Well, see if it starts. Well, it does start up. And there goes that obnoxious radio that won't shut off. But you know, really, it does go down the road. And I can feel the brakes. The ABS acting up, they're kind of flunky when you hit them hard. It bounces around a lot. It shifts good enough for some old thing like this. If he wants to keep it and drive it around, what the heck? It's certainly not gonna win any beauty contests, but hey, it still goes down the road decently. I've seen Toyota vans with 500,000 miles on it. Pretty much everything still works perfectly fine. Pieces haven't broken off of them and they don't have any problems to get their car legally inspected every year. But in this case, heck, he owns it, it runs. Why not just drive it till the wheels fall off? They might actually do that one day, but what the heck. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Rain Swartcher says, Scotty, what's the best new luxury car to buy? Lexus or is Acura better? Oh, I'd say Lexus is definitely, I don't think any of the new ones are the best ones to buy. Buy them used like I did. <laughs> Get a Lexus. I got a Lexus for 60,000 miles from my wife for three grand. <laughs> it had 60,000 miles on it. Still runs like a clock, you know, eight years later. So there's nothing wrong with doing that. But if you got the money, definitely I'd get a Lexus. They hold up the longest. But as I always warn people, I do not advise to get the V8 version because they get expensive as they age. They get worse gas mileage. And don't even think about a hybrid version because they're uber expensive when they finally break down. Just the plain Jane six-cylinder one, hey, those are fine. And if you don't mind a smaller engine, the four-cylinder ones are good in the smaller ones. Stonehouse One says, hey, I got an 03 Toyota Camry, 130,000 miles. When I stop on hills, it rolls back considerably and it's hard to get up. Do you think there's a problem with the transmission? I would assume it. The 03s aren't notorious for having transmission problems, but now here's a way you can test it. If you're just sitting there and your foot's off the gas and you're on a hill and it's rolling, back. Well, you got to put your foot on the brake. Realize that. Maybe you didn't earlier. Now, if you didn't earlier, you do now. That's not necessarily a transmission problem. That would be the car's idling a little bit too low and the idle isn't holding it up on an incline that starts slowing back. And since it's not idling right, it's not running right and it won't accelerate right. If that's the case, you want to check things like see if the fuel filter's clogged, tune it up. A lot of times you get the fuel injectors pressure cleaned when they're that old, 17 years old. But that's only if you have your foot off the brake. If your foot's on the brake, then it's a completely different thing because it should not roll with your foot on the brake. <laughs> but I'm assuming it's happened with your foot off the brake. And it doesn't mean it's a transmission. It could easily be something else that's straining the engine. It's idling too low. Then it's going to roll backwards and it's not going to accelerate because it's not running correctly. So check all those things first. Von Mike says, I have a 2015 Genesis 3.8 liter sedan with 90,000 miles. Should I keep it or sell it? I don't know how costly it's going to be in the future. They're okay vehicles as they age. They can become problematical. But you still only have 90,000 miles. Maybe put it on a Market. See what you can get for it. If you can get some serious money for it, by all means, get rid of the thing. But it is a five-year-old Genesis with 90,000 miles. A lot of times, you won't get much money for that vehicle. If you're not going to get much money, you're screwed that way. So in that case, I would just say, drive the thing till the wheels fall off. You never know how long it's going to last. It could last a lot longer. You never know. I got a customer with the Genesis is 150,000. It's still going okay. So you got to decide financially what's the bad thing because I never tell somebody to get rid of a car that's running good if they're not going to get hardly anything for it. It's only a logical decision. I personally wouldn't bought one in the first place, but you have it. Take care of it. If you can't get any money selling it, keep it and see what happens. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.